Right, so I'm using the jack under the gearbox and in slow increments just matching it with the with the engine and coming down a little bit at a time to help the two go together. You kind of got it like this where you're trying to match it so that spline fits. Okay, it's gone in. Not too bad. I think we're in now. I'm gonna lift up lift you actually up on the tripod holding the whole tripod trying not to get the legs of the tripod catching anything as I walk about so we're about to do the final lower down into the engine mount you can see we're nearly in and it's closing up on the bell housing side so it must have gone on the splines it would never get that close so it's a question that side's gone in actually I think that's in. Yep, that's going in on its own. So that's good. So this really, I don't know if I can do it with the camera, but I reckon it'll slot in this. We should just get it. We might have to take uh, even a little bit more off the gearbox because I've jacked the gearbox up. It's pushing the engine slightly up now. The engine wants to finish and sit down. So let me go back to the jack. Slowly you go up again. Bring you close in. Let me just get that jack. Because it's still got plenty of downward travel to go. Just slowly on it. And it should lower the engine a little bit more. Yep, there you go. Right, that's the gearbox is now free from the jack. This will mean now that the engine should drop into the final position, which it looks like it is. It's five mil away. I think that's it. I think if I do this now. In you go. If I do this now, it should. There you go, landed. Thought it might. That is it. That's precise control. One man, engine in. There you go, that's the joy of using that item. I'll bring you right into it, you can see it. They're not expensive. 50 quid. Get a quality one if you can. You don't want it to shatter and drop your engine on the floor. But that gave me control. Obviously, I was over the slam panel and it's not a mint slam panel. So if you had a concourse car, you'd really need someone helping you as you get over that section. You do need the height with it. It's looking like, well, I actually don't know the height. I'm 5'11". So I would say you need... Well, if I'm 5'11 and I had my had this tape measure on the top of my head, uh, it is another 15 inches on top, so that's another foot and a half. So I'd say go eight feet and you're well in. So eight foot boom or eight foot overhead gantry and you'd be in. So we've got that up to that point relatively easily and there's not been any break between the film and you've watched it virtually in real time so however long it ran for on this, on this clip is the time i've not stopped the tape and, and messed it's just a question now i mean i hope the clutch is okay i've got a different clutch release bearing in there because the fork was right at the end of its travel. I'm hoping that that's it. If that doesn't work, the engine's got to come out again. So really, I'm going to be investigating the clutch situation first because if that doesn't work, it's got to come back out. So I'll leave the rope on. I'll shift the chains out of the way and then I'm going to inspect the clutch fork and I'm going to connect the clutch and operate it. A couple of bell housing bolts just to brace it all. Okay, back in a sec.
Okay, I'm putting a lot of uh, ancillary items on. Now we can go down, lower down off the jacks. It's all bolted up. Start mode. Batteries back on. Come in and have a look what's been going on. All right, I'm just going to put the carb on. I've got the gasket on for the carburetor, a bit of well seal on. I've got the rock cover on with a new gasket. So now this one down there. Four bolts to bolt that up. It's going to be coming off. The thing I've not got is a accelerator cable to suit this type carb. So we're going to have to start it on the chunk revs. It'll work. I've got the bracket. I managed to find a bracket for the accelerator cable because don't forget this is Pinto twin chunk. It's a different accelerator setup than the single chunk that we've just had on this. There's one bolt here that's on the carburetor, which is always difficult to get. I'll show you. Watch this tricky one. This free hand then, just down there, the fourth bolt. It's right underneath all the gubbins, so you can get it on with your finger. Then I've got a special spanner which I've made to do this so I won't do it with a camera but it's it's around this area somewhere you've got to rest it on the post and uh, get it on there it's tricky but I'll, I'll show you the span in a sec hang on while I get set up right you might just be able to see it hold on there I've got it on with my finger and then what I use is this. And it fits in. Spin you round. Bit of a rotation there. Goes in like this. And you tighten up that way. And there we go. Takes a little bit, but it works. Pete's carburetor spanner. Alright, I'll get that locked down so you get the idea. Like this. We should be able to, to start it up. I've got the exhaust on. We'll get all them down and fuel pipes on. Vac hoses should start. Now, I'm worried about the clutch release bearing because it just sat into the fork and you could remove it again, whereas normally they clip in. I don't understand why it didn't clip in. I seem to have some vague memory that some of them had like mounting clips on the side of them. That worries me. Now I've set the tension and it is held against the the um, release plate under tension. So I'm hoping it's not going to rattle. I just didn't like the fact that it wasn't clipped into the clutch fork. What effect that's going to have, I don't know yet. I'm coming to the end of my time today as well. It's approaching, it's half past seven. So I want to, I'm going to have to just do, I mean, it'd be nice if we can power it out of here. That'd be mission accomplished if we could. So let's try in the next half hour. If we don't get it in the next half hour, that's it till tomorrow. Well, as far as I can tell, other than the temperature sender wire and the oil pressure wire, there's nothing else to do. Fuel's connected up. Distributor's timed in on top dead centre, might need a twist. Choke's connected. There's an oil feed wire to connect. Uh, oil pressure sensor wire and that's it. It's been a long day, I'm tiring out, I've got to get this done. Right, that's on. So really, folks, this is it. I've no idea what's going to happen, but it's the usual first time start. Uh, cam's timed in. There's no water in it, so we can't run it for more than 30 seconds, really. The idea is just to get it out of here. And we can um, carry on building it next door. The main thing is to get them cars out of the, uh, the open. So if I, if I crank it now... Fuel's got to get through, but as far as I know, that's it. Whether the clutch bearing makes a noise is yet to be seen.
and these books found them. Has fuel got to the carburetor yet? We're gonna to have to rig the battery charge up straight away anyway. Instead of losing cranking power, everything's on there. This fuel, so that should have gone really. It's just coming through now. Just coming through. Let me get the battery charger. We'll be right back. Fuel is coming through. We need to check for a spark. King lead on. King lead on. Recognition unit connected. Could be well timed out, I suppose. But I thought I'd got that right. Try it again. Some fuel has come through. There you go. We're in business. You have no accelerator cable, so I would have thought it picked it up straight away off the choke without an accelerator cable. It sounded like that was right when it fired, then it sounded smooth. Go straight away. I'm surprised. It only goes straight away. I'm surprised. Take the choke off. Just in case it needs air. I've got any power now. Hmm, I'll double check everything, but it did initially fire then. Sounded good as well for the few seconds it ran. I'm just che checking the basics and rocking it on a 19 with ignition on, and you should get a spark at TDC. So we're, we're level there, and we're level there. Voice is going now, I'm getting tired. And then um, I'm looking for a spark here, which we were getting. The dizzy was miles out, I've twisted it right round. You won't hear it, but it should crack just as it hits that. And also, if you rock, if you rock this, if you loosen it, and twist the dizzy in a position that it should be firing till it does fire. I'll just loosen it off. All right, loosen the dizzy off, and then you rock the dizzy so you get your spark. Can you hear that? So it's here, when that's there, when that's there, and I this, it means it's sparking in the right place, well it's right round, so the timing was miles out, so we've got to now make sure that it's sending it to the right spark plug, so where that is now is where it fires. That needs to be lead one, it's one, three, four, two. So the rotor needs to be pointing to lead one when that fires at that point. We might have to rearrange it, shouldn't have to, but I'll just do a little bit of timing up on these leads while it's charging as well. It should, I think it'll start if I get this right. 
right i've set that different to how it was on when it was on kp's other engine so it's sparking on one as we go now the rotor points to that lead then it's three four and two so it was quite far out so i'd expect it to fire now i don't know why i didn't put that uh, i don't know why it didn't work lining it up that way but i must admit i've timed this differently so I thought it's just going to be the same as what I had on KP when I did that. I installed this unit 1342. It was right parked over that way. But I suppose you can lift them up and twist them around. Let's just see anyway. I think it'll go now. Okay, 1342. I'll try it again. This sparked up back on. I don't know why I couldn't just copy the whole setup across how it came off the other Pinto. It's what I thought I'd done. I haven't changed anything else. But it did go now. I mean I didn't I didn't check this because I just took it off as it was. Normally I would have done what I've just done. So probably it'll go. Or backfire, I forgot the first time and cam belt wrong. It should at least try and fire. Try some choke because I can hear it having a go there. A lot more than it was before. There we go. Just want to time it up now. around that zone anyway I'm not I don't know why it doesn't just go like a trooper they normally just go like troopers just kick straight in no matter what I can only try advancing or disarming now to see what happens very slightly one way of course when you flood it it becomes difficult to keep doing this should just kick straight in though no better that way. Signs of life. enough to get us out of here anyway PC continuing on and we've driven into the garage all is looking good I'm just putting on the rocker cover the cam cover what I've done I've painted this cam cover I'll take you in in a minute it was shot blasted back and primed but what I've done, I've, I've aged it in a bit, so it doesn't look as shiny. Just 
done the same with the cam cover, the cam belt cover. So rock at the camshaft cover and the cam belt cover both been de-stressed or aged in by priming it then dusting it back with some bronze which looks like rust then then dusting over the the RAL 5010 so this is the paint code on this is RAL 5010 that's the cam belt paint cover there is a darker version too I, I seem to think that they did two types of blue cover later ones were darker I think I think that's right correct me if I'm wrong the early ones were certainly a lighter blue but there are two types of 5010 would you believe even with those pan 10 codes or whatever they're called I've had um, stuff done at the powder coaters that's come out in two different colors so yeah I'm gonna be careful of that I'll take you overhead in a sec I'm just put in the, the little securing bolts now the 10 mil head ones and then we'll nip those up then we've got the cam cover itself to fit I'm missing the special nuts that are needed to mount the cam cover on the little rubber insulating washers but we might just have to bolt straight up as is it's just the way it goes I did paint this with the gasket attached to it because I've actually trial fitted this to get the to get the car out of the garage we had to put the cover on us it would have splashed oil everywhere consequently <clears throat> I've left the gasket in it so it is over painted so strictly speaking we're non-concourse anyway but I think you know that last of the bolts here and then we can nip up <clears throat> just at the back This one's always tricky. We've got an accelerator cable we need, I've ordered one. Luckily I found an accelerator bracket. This Pinto setup was set for Weber <coughs> single carb. Not Weber, just yeah, Weber single carb. We've gone to twin choke of course, which meant a different throttle linkage, which luckily I had must have just accumulated one over the years. But I wouldn't like to try and find one of those these days. Just trying to wiggle in this last one at the back. Andy Williams on the radio, I think I might have it. It's just not having this last. I'm trying to find the threads here. And then we can do it in the order. It's not mega critical, the order. It happens. Is in the book the tightening sequence for this, but I'm going to follow it logically, expand it out. I think we might just have this one here. These ones, yeah, we've got that one. Well, we're happy with the hard jewel. I like to do those the ones on the, the front tower first because it closes up. If you lock the outer ones, it doesn't close it up as easy. pulls it across which helps you get this one out. Boom, it certainly does. Boom, it certainly does. Boom! I knew this one would be trouble at the back because I didn't have it lined up. That's the only one though. There's no reason why it shouldn't be lined up. Accelerator bracket slightly in the way here. And it should go. So, this one at the back proving tricky. I don't think I can get it with the accelerator bracket in place. 
as I said, can cover the stress and aged in. Didn't want it to look too shiny. Might be in at the back now. A little bit of wiggle. This might go. We'll have to nip those up later. But yeah, put it all back together now. We'll get the cam cover on at the front. Take you over. Here we go. Hold on, you're coming in, you're coming in. There you go. Okay, with the cam cover on, I'm going to take you overhead. So I hold the tripod and just take you in. Have a look, it's just slightly stressed a little bit, uh, de-stressed a little bit, just to look a bit rough and ready. So put the ignition leads back on. I have a fuel line here to reroute. I don't like that tight kink there, so I'm going to go and find myself some R6 fuel hose and put a slightly smaller fuel filter on. This is under stress, it's bending on the tab. I don't like that fuel filter. And then that's it, I think. We've got everything that we need after that. Cam cover will bolt on. There's just two posts at the front and one in the middle, one down at the bottom. It should have rubber washers through it. I'll get the cam cover here. Cam belt timing cover through there. It's going to have to just be bolted hardcore up. They must put the, wa the washers on for vibration purposes. I can't quite see the, the full reason. It has a horseshoe clip which fits there, which we're going to pinch. I'll show you the horseshoe clip because these are very hard to get parts. It's on. The horseshoe's gone, folks. Uh, we need to go next door and get it. It's next door. It's a little clip goes into there. And that slots on the water pump bolt. So that's aged in as well. You can see how I've got the rust on that. I sprinkled salt on it. Then painted it, then rubbed, rubbed at the paint, the salt broke away. It had attacked and rusted the metal underneath just to make it a little bit more aged worthy. <clears throat> Again, didn't want it to look too new. So those go together. Whoa! It's English for stop a horse, that's nearly fallen down. So yeah, there's a um, plastic radiator cowling to go on. Let's just talk about the radiator cowling. You need this two seconds it's coming into your screen any second now you need this on your radiator folks it helps divert the air oh it helps keep the air round the fan helps with the airflow at least they often missing some were complete circles earlier ones later ones they left a cutout in them also what you need to help with your airflow is this it's from the club it's the little infill cardboard channel piece that stops when you get ram air so you're driving along and it's pushing you you wouldn't want the air the air is going to hit the radiator and see it as some resistance and it'll if this piece of cardboard isn't in position it's going to try and push some of the air not all of it up that way what you want to do is channel all of the air through the rad so this piece of cardboard even though it looks like nothing actually helps with the efficiency of your cooling system and there will be a ratio it could be five percent it could be as much as a five percent increase in cooling efficiency i don't know you'd have to get technical and measure it but i bet you that makes quite a difference okay and so would this cowling so there's no need to have bigger radiators and fancy systems on a non-tuned engine certainly if it's in the english climate anyway and I think that if you've got a, co a clean core of your radiator and a clean engine block, uh, that is not a sludged up engine block. There's no point wasting money on big radiators when all you needed to have done was to have cleaned and flushed out your block. They overheat for a reason. Ford tested these engines in extreme conditions in their laboratories right down to minus x up to plus x and they didn't overheat in standing traffic under load in a wind tunnel everything they designed it to work and convert the heat and extract the heat and cool the engine the only reason that you are overheating or well, one of the main reasons one of the main reasons you're overheating is because your cylinder block jacket is sludged up 
and or your core radiator is sludged up. You either need a new radiator or you need to de-sludge it. In terms of your cylinder block, you need to get that out and clean, which requires certain chemicals to fill and flush and fill and flush and sometimes there'll be the only way will be a jet wash by taking the front parts of your engine off so that you can get a jet wash into the thermostat housing and the water pump to take the drain bung off the drain core bung in the bottom of the cylinder block to remove that to take off your cooling hoses and your carburetor inlet manifold and blast it out if you don't do that and you're still overheating it's because it's sludged. That's it. Cooling efficiency. I'm not saying that if you're in standing traffic in a 40 degree heat wave, you may not boil up, but I don't think so. I personally think that Ford and probably any other motor manufacturer tested this up to the extreme, but with clean operating conditions. If they'd have tested it with a sludged up engine, they would have been producing different results and would have recommended a 50-50 mixture all the time just like they do here on the decal that's there for a reason because keeping it a 50-50 coolant mix prevents bigger sludge buildup so yeah that's a little uh, little bit of a, a ramble about cooling cowling flood the cowling cardboard trim piece for the top to force air through to improve airflow efficiency a clean cylinder jacket acid cleaned if you can clean radiator and clean hoses new hoses just replace them don't if your hoses are you don't if, if you're not able to establish the age of the hoses and they look a little bit tired just replace them because they can fur up inside too and you won't overheat that's if your timing set to wrong timing can cause overheat issues as well where was i i'm going to go and get the horseshoe clip for this and bolt that on see you in a sec okay this is the clip i'm telling you about there it is goes in there clips in at the back as i said difficult to find but that slots on the post of the water pump as seen in the previous film now then it is time to bolt this on I don't think we can get the rubbers so I have got one of the bolts so I might try and find one of the rubbers okay be right back right this is how I'm gonna do my cam cover bolt I've just filed these washers down there hang on I'm gonna have to turn the, the music down folks blooming eh? Andy Williams what the hell Andy! sorry about that I've got a fan running as well you can hear that in the background that's bringing fresh air in for when we have the engine running Okay, so horseshoe went on. These, I haven't got them. They look like, I'm going to see if there's one here. Yes, there is. I'm not going to use this because I'm not a set. That's a shank and then the thread at the end, it's a 10 mil head. But I think what happens is that stops you from over tightening it. So it gets into the, the block or the, the fixing studs actually on the block. Then it can't go any further and the rubber grommet sits around that collar. If you do it my way, there's a chance you can over squish the rubber grommets, which I've happened to found, find, found. You can use just standard ones, but these are standard ones that you buy from electrical wholesales or wherever. And then I've used a soldering iron to make the hole in the middle because these were blind grommets. But I found that rubber doesn't last with the heat and perishes. So these won't last long. Then you get a rattly cam cover. If we do, we carry on tightening and it'll tighten the cam cover down. These washers here, I've done the slightly larger size, then just croc sanded and edge off the washer so that it sits in that recess look. This is the bottom one and it goes into the alloy front cover plate, the bottom, the bottom crank plate, the alley plate at the bottom of your engine. A stress alley plate at the front of the engine. If you over tighten that one, you'll strip those aluminium threads guaranteed sound like you've heard it before yep i've done it stripped the threads that that bottom bolt goes into for this reason didn't have the collar bolt that i've just shown you with the shank on it this is in swampy days 
used one of those which is fine but you didn't, wasn't over tighten it so what you've got to do put thread lock on them and just nip them up and the thread lock should hold see the thing is when you tighten on the on that call up to that collar that will lock it so i'm going to find some thread lock i'm going to put that on the front of the engine then that's out the way see you in a sec right i'm getting ready i've done a compression test by the way i'm getting ready now to hook this engine up to the krypton machine i've got a remote start unit which can uh, run the engine i've got also the readings through for the pressure test plugs have all gone back in so what we got was basically with the pressure test they take all four plugs out engine warm throttle wide open and for me i use the remote starter just to crank it you can go inside and leave the gauge but i've got readings of one four five in um psi 150 on two 150 on three or 151 on three and 170 on four so a bit of an imbalance between certainly between one and four i'm not going to worry about that too much at least all the readings were in the green the fact that it varies a bit as long as it varies in the green i'm, I'm okay it wasn't dipping into the red sub nine psi area or sorry sub nine bar or sub um sub 120 you want to be minimum 120 psi so we're all good on the pressure test the cam covers stressed in de-stressed de in that's rusted in nice i've lacquered over it to lock that in i put the decals on there and aged those in as well so everything looks like it's been in for a little while not too shiny next job is accelerator linkage i found an accelerator cable and fitted it it's ready to go on here it is on the bracket accelerator cable on the bracket there okay so luckily i had the bracket and i didn't think i had a cable i've ordered one it'll be arriving tomorrow didn't need it today because i found one and then the, the accelerator lever arm i've had to shorten by one centimeter i don't know why this must be off a different setup uh, this needed to be one centimeter short so that the cable pulled straight if i left it like that cable was pulling at an angle on it so it was best to straighten that up we can now get acceleration so Given that the cable's here, we can drive the car now. We're all legal and on the road. And with the bonnet back on, we can go and test this engine out. There's no oil drips or water leaks. There is some smoke on heavy acceleration only since I've been revving it in the garage. But it's not burnt off all the crap that will have built up in there. So we need to just run it and see. Oil level's correct. Water level's good. Nothing to stop us quickly Krypton in this machine, this engine, and then after we've done that, check the timing. I've set initially a timing at 12 degrees. You could go back to 8, depends. But we'll just see how the spark plugs look and how the pistons look, and we can do that cylinder test. So we're going to expect to ha what to happen is the low compression cylinder, part 1, will probably have the least effect when it's knocked out on the krypton because the krypton machine enables you to knock out a cylinder at a time and then monitor the drop associated drop in rpm which tells you how effective uh, relative to the other pistons that uh, piston is or rather that cylinder pot is so we'll do that we'll also look at the voltage spikes on the each uh, piston on each sorry on each cylinder is the word i'm looking for and um, we'll check the vacuum and vacuum should be in the green. That's another indicator of engine health. So we'll disconnect the inlet hose for the uh, master cylinder brake servo and connect that to the, the inlet of the manifold to the Krypton uh, K-bar, whatever it is, on the VAC, HGs. That should be it. We'll do those tests. So before we do that, put the accelerator on and then... You'll see this shortly hooked up. It's lab coat on. Serious time. We're going to crank this baby up. Oh, we'll get the fan running. I've got a fresh air fan to pump fresh air in here. Garage doors will go up. We've also got the fume extractor as well. We'll rig those things up too. So we've got that there. We're going to bring you in so you can see what we just did. Lightly bringing up the camera as usual. There we go. So 
so that's it there Let's set that up some people like these visual references because they're doing their vehicles and they want to see if parts are missing what they look like sometimes this helps and that's a rare item if it's missing hard to get clips into there see there's that saddle looks like it does go that way it's like a cage clip type thing and then we're there you can see some remnants of the stag seal that's crept out that's good that's what we want our new rooted in oil fuel filter rooted the pipe around the back it actually roots quite nice there that pipe i've redone that's it we're going to get you up onto our krypton machine right over there but before we do that we'll clear the floor space so it's really tidy lab coat on let's test this car engine out on the machine see what we get and then bonnet on and road test that'll be good fun okay you're here and here's the krypton ready to go so i've got this record sheet card that we keep and i'm just going to go through it so we'll start with a fan belt that's good air cleaner's not on yet uh, battery cables are good cooling system's good fuel system's good mileage 98109 battery voltage at coil so that's with the ignition switched on so we go to coil and at the moment that's nothing i don't really know why that is there should be voltage at the coil there won't be unless it's running so we'll get a standard voltage 13.2 on the battery and now we want the cranking volts so this will go down with cranking but what we do first is kill the engine with this switch so that it won't start up and we look at that drop there so 10.3 starting volts voltage at current can't do just yet charging system we can't do just yet so now we can do that by starting the car up we will need the choke on and then I'm going to go through all the different tests I'll run through it I won't talk you through what I'm actually doing at the time I'll just fill out when we're done I'll go through what we did okay because it'll be too noisy to do so I'll allow the engine to start now but it's no choke so I'll put the choke on might have to go in the car for that Some choke on the fans running. I I don't need the exhaust extractor because the back of the garage is wide open. The carbon monoxide will probably go off. You'll hear a bleeping noise. I'll probably have to move it outside because even with this now it's not going to draw out enough. There's some fumes coming from the engine, from the paints, the exhaust o-rings leaking a little bit. It's not bad, but it is leaking a little bit. So I'm gonna try and start up straight in I'm not on battery kill am I? that should go that's battery kill ignition on, let's just check everything so we should get all the readings in hold on, let's make sure Voltage at the coil 12.6. We just need to get the car to start. Initially, we're not starting. It could be flooded because I've been fit because I've been fitting that choke cable. I've, I've put a lot of petrol into there, so let's just see what happens. just dying straight away am I missing something down there double check I don't think so no not dropping it's not right that
to me smacks of the ballast not connected. But it is. The ignition, is, the ignition definitely on, it's just chin. No. You idiot. <laughs> it does a <laughs> it does help if you turn the ignition on, you idiot. That was the reason why you get an initial fire, by the way, <clears throat> when it was doing that on the starter, is because I'm hot hot wiring the starter with this uh, with this, you do get 12 volts upon the starter's cold start feed. So the cold start feed is boosting the coil, but as soon as I release the starter, that cold start feed's cut off. Ignition isn't on, therefore the engine wouldn't start, not like now. Okay, a very nice clean line on the alternator there. 14 volts, 14 volts charging. So, 14 volts charge, which is good. Breaker points don't matter. Coil and condenser pattern. Okay, so that's this pattern. Coil, condenser. Absolutely perfect, rock steady, rock steady. That's the same all the way down. Don't need those. That's in the green, so vacuum just there. That is good. And absolutely rock steady vacuum. No wandering around. The engine is absolutely idling, rock steady. For high idle, we need to bring the idle down, but the choke's on at the moment. Let's have a look at the sparks. Oh, that's a lovely pattern. That's just right, the perfect pattern. Absolutely bang on. Beautiful. That's all patterns superimposed on each other, so they're all even. All even. This is our timing now, we're going to set the timing. Let's see what we set up. I can come across here. Just as we thought, 12 degrees. And now we want to see the advance when we rev it. Thought we might lose it though, just before we could get to the idle adjustment and fire it up. Ok, 
Okay, so as I said, we can fire it. We can fire it with this, and we check the timing light at higher revs now. a 40 degrees advance at 3000 RPM. I can't do the fuel just yet, we need to get it on the fuel analyzer. Carburetor condition is good, that's not applicable. So on the power test next and then we'll check the spark voltages. Back to the screen for you over this way back onto the screen bring you in so now we're going to do the voltage spike tests here they are 20 kilovolts plugs so this is cylinder two four three and one okay let's get you around there you go, there you go. Two, four, three, and one. Or oh, the firing order. One, three, four, two, one, three, four, two. Okay. Voltage in kilovolts. 16 kilovolts across the board. Sorry, 8 kilovolts across the board. 8. We're on that first scale there, the 20 kilovolt scale, 20 kilovolt scale, 8 kilovolts right across the board, 8 kilovolts, okay, spark KV, 8, 8, 8 and 8, coil, coil KV, coil KV, 12, to engine drop now dropping out cylinder at a time cylinder one first cylinder drop cylinder drop here that's your cylinder drop hit it drop of try that again this is the one we expect to be weak Seventy six RPM. Try again. Seventy RPM. Two. Nice. Oh, 90 I think. Let's get that off.
You have to disconnect the, the CO when you're around. Disconnect the CO. <laughs> Cable's in the way. <laughs> Over there. Still going off over there. We can sort out that CO means let's go in crazy. Okay, so I'm still under two droplets. Ah, oh, okay. I'll be able to be nice. Right, now I'm going to do engine cylinder drop test. Expect cylinder 1 to be the weakest based on the compression readings we got. Cylinder 1, drop down by... Hold on, redo that. Probably an H70. That's it now. There we go. Seventy. So that's seventy drop on cylinder one. Cylinder two. One thirty. Still in the three. Eighty. One thirty. Done there, we've done there, we've done there. Fourteen point seven charging voltage. Full voltage there. Put that one out. That one in. Checking these are all identical. Bolt is peaking caps for your spark plug check. All level. Now for some RPM. That's all good. Vacuum here is good.
Okay, everything checks out very evenly across the engine. So those compression tests, whilst there was a bit of uh, difference between the, the parts, we had um, we had a 170 on four, we had a 150 on three, we had a 150 on two, and we had a 145 on one, and that's PSI at warm and WOC. Wide, op wide open throttle. So 170 to 145 was the difference, not too bad. All these patterns are correct, all that fits, everything's good there. So I'll just do the kilovolts now, coil kilovolts, lead kilovolts, rotor kilovolts, we've done, can't check those. Sparking at the top, that's it, it was all even across, there was no variation, so it's one of the smoothest setups I've seen. The only thing that worries me is, Upon hard revving, I'm getting blue smoke outside. We can only hope that it's just because the engine has been on its side, upside down and stuff. It's now time to take it on the road. The Krypton's done. We're done there. We're finished with that sheet. The CO in the building gets up high very quick. And that worries me a lot. Even with that fan on, it still wasn't able to drop it down. So it's dangerous doing this. Let's get the camera down. It is dangerous doing this. Um, you know, you, I think for any Krypton machine, when you're going to be doing it, if you're tempted to get one of these off eBay and get one running yourself, and you, you're going to be really tempted to be doing it in the garage because you can hardly take this outside. And most people's garages aren't the same as a commercial garage with a high ceiling and probably extractor fans. So what you've got to remember is this. Whilst your exhaust might be pointing out right out the back of the roller shutter like mine is, the fumes will still be coming off the engine, especially if it's a new build engine or recently put together. Your manifold could be leaking just enough. It doesn't take much to fill this up. So get yourself a um, carbon monoxide monitor and if, you, if it gets too high, you want to be switching it or you'll be getting high. So yeah, and then dying. So uh, yeah, you'll be falling asleep. Another tip with it is to have two people. This will also work. So you get a watchdog, uh, you know, a babysitter, whatever you want to call them, someone else. Uh, maybe not, not right next to you, but in the vicinity and say, you know, they can intervene if you were to fall asleep, uh, get carbon monoxide poison, because what typically happens is you'll, you'll go to sleep. So it's dangerous, so be careful. You know, what, what I didn't want to happen was encourage people to buy Kryptons, because they are good fun, and then, then you know, do it on your own on a Sunday afternoon, and someone, your wife's out shopping, your partner's out shopping, whoever is out shopping or away or in the house, not hearing, and you get carbon monoxide poisoning because you've got your engine running up for an unusually longer time that you might have done because this can get engrossing and very interesting you're going to have to have fume extraction system or in the very worst case maybe you could have a mask on but let someone know that you're in that garage messing with the car if you're going to be using one of these that's all I can think of saying for that Vacuum pressure really good and stable. Voltage is all good at eight kilovolts. Cylinder differences all around the same. A drop in RPM from from 70 up to 120 RPM drop. Pretty balanced across there to be fair. So we're done. We'll catch you in a sec. Let's get in the car and test it. I'm worried about the smoke. Upon acceleration, it's still burning. The oil level's good, so I don't know why that is. Shouldn't be a smoky engine. I don't recall it being a smoky engine. We're back to the drawing board if it is. We're nearly ready for the road test. I just want to put the air cleaner on. I've done one dry run down the road, or say dry run. Guess who forgot to tighten up the alternator securing bracket to water pump and so blew the water pump gasket right out of the side of the engine. Schoolboy error on the alternator bracket. I'll show you what I mean in case you're going to do this yourself. You probably won't, but this alternator bracket here when you fit your alternator, the 15mm bolt at the end, in my case it's a 14 actually, through the water pump is loose so that the bracket can pivot, then you lock it all together and the final job is to nip up the water pump bolt, which I didn't do, that 14mm water pump bolt at the top, some have noticed a 15, this one's 14, I didn't nip it up because it was, I put a 17 in there as well which was the wrong bolt, anyway 
I went down the road, engine ran good, but it blew, it blew the water out. I've come back, took the pump off, all the radiator out again, took the pump off and put the right bolt on it, tensioned up the alternator, nipped the bolt up tight, cam cover went on. You can hear how they rattle. I can't quite work out where the rattle is, but I'm gonna have to nail that down because that will rattle. Okay, nice new air cleaner going on. Air pan there. There's an air pan securing bracket. They're hard to find here, which locks down on the early type at least. I did have some laser cut there off the original. That almost fits. It just requires a little bit of filing to fit. Got that as a spare, but this one will go on. This is an original. Hard to find air pan brackets. Not got any. I have to make some up. That's there. And one here to the rocker cover, cam cover. Stops it flexing doing that. They have to make them up. So let's see. Right, we can put this on. I'm trying to find the securing screws. The early type, well, it's a Series 2 MAN filter housing without the post, four post bolts going through it. Held in with the, these screws. Small one for the end. And then I think it's this medium length type. I have used these longer ones before then cut them because they go too deep in otherwise when I've not been able to get any in the past on the other cars. That's that. So the only thing's missing is two securing brackets for the pan which we'll probably have to make and I want to just try and stop that. Okay. Let's get everything on. Okay that's it we're ready for road testing. Might just drop that tick over just a touch. There we go, let's, let's get this car on the road, eh? testing the engine. I got a rattly door panel. Well don't you worry about that, it's the printer we want to test. Other than the noisy gearbox and that. We're going pretty nicely. Nice and smooth. Apart from this road of course. Let's get onto a main road, we'll do some We'll open it up, open the taps up a little bit now. Around here. Let's just get out of this zone. Here we go. when you get the pinking. So there she goes.
temperature good. Seems okay. I didn't notice any blue smoke pouring out of there. At all, no blue smoke. Let's go through again. One last little run. That all seems very good, so let's put a cam belt sticker on so we know when we change the, the mileage on the cam belt. Oh, just them brackets to do. And um, we'll move on to something else. I hope you enjoyed this film. We'll catch you on the next episode. Project KP then. Pete C signing out. Just going to adjust the timing with a little bit of pinking. Normal when you're setting them up. We'll catch you on the next episode. Glad you liked that one. Well, I hope you liked that one. We'll catch you again on the city. PC signing out. Over and out.